I'm mad about yachts and plants and parks, cats and hats and cricket bats, dogs and dogs, beat us with cars. I'm mad about lightning and horseback riding. I'm mad about, I'm mad about boats and trains, model airplanes. I'm mad about, I got mad about collecting no mugs, but the jokes. There is always something that we go mad about. Hello, and welcome back to Bad About. And as you can see, this week we're up to our ears or eyes in technology. Excuse me while I just add the finishing touches to this brilliantly designed, automated, one-handed, souffle-making machine. Now, it's quite simple, really. I just provide the primary power here by turning that anti-clockwise. That brings this little needle along here, which will go around the pulley, will explode the balloon. That gives me the signal that I pull the chain, around comes the pulley here, and that automatically tips the souffle mixture into the pan. Really incredibly simple. Well, now we've got you fizzling with excitement. Just wait till you see the wizard gadgets in the technological dream house of my old friend ace racing car driver Sterling Moss. But more of that later. Just watch this. There we go. Round there, onto the balloon. Burst the balloon. As the balloon bursts, I pull that and it tips over. <laughs> A perfect souffle. Well, silly as it looks, this gadget might well revolutionize automated kitchens of the 90s. Lots of great inventions have looked just as strange in the initial stages with bits of string and Meccano and pieces like this. You know, the designer of the mini car, Sir Alec Isigonis, was so mad about Meccano, in fact, that when he retired, he asked for the biggest box of Meccano as a leaving present and inspired the Alec Isigonis Meccano competition for young inventors. And Tony and James here are two of the past finalists. Now, let's have a look at Tony's invention over here. There we are. Well, ah, that's something, isn't it? Oh, I like the look of that. Yes, I definitely like the look of that. What exactly is it? It's a helicopter. A helicopter, yes. It's the most unusual shape for a helicopter. Oh, I like... Oh, beautiful. It's a bit like the flying bedstead, the original ones before the Harriers came out. I love its smooth operation. How long does that take to, to finally you... get it right? I mean, not well, just to invent... Well, until now... Right. Literally, the whole time. How long, though? I mean, basically, how, would you, how long would you think? Well, about six months. Six months? And to actually build? A week. A week to build and six months to get right. I love it. I think it's a brilliant piece of invention. I think it's a lovely piece of, of engineering, and you've really done a magnificent job there. I tell you what, let's go and see what James has got, because he's also worked with Meccano there, and we, we can see what he's built, because it's totally different. One's built for lightness, and the other's obviously built very robustly. This is what? This is a Class 86 British Rail electric locomotive. Yes. Which runs between Crewe and London. When on it's off strike, you mean? <laughs> that's, that's on off broken dam. Oh, it's, but that's a superb model. Now, what do you use for your catenary, your top uh, This is a piece of rod. Yes. Uh, and the locomotive picks it up using the pantograph. Uh-huh. Can we get that coming back there? It's such fun to see that pantograph working. And it's all Meccano, the whole yes, thing. But that's not Meccano. sand of the rod. It's the only part not Yes, the only not sand. sand and part. How long did that take you to make? Uh, about two weeks, in all. Two weeks. So yes. you were roughly a week, and you were roughly two weeks, but to get it right, you took considerably longer. Yes, yes. About six Landed months each. Yes. And you actually won the junior... Alex Isigonis, Isigonis. Yes. magnificent. You were finalists, is that it? Yes, we were both at Wembley. Have you ever used computers for these things? Well, uh, not yet, but it's coming. We've no. each got a computer now. You have? I'd love to see underneath yes. this machine, because I think that's an absolutely marvellous piece of, of engineering. And you've got what? You've got four drive motors, presumably. I don't think you could move that weight with only two drive motors. Yes, you have. No, there you've are got four, four, four on motors. the bogies. And they're what? They're in parallel with a series uh, switching? Yes, that's, that's, right. that's right. I think it's a the superb cab. piece of... And did, did you use a computer for that? No, no. This yeah. is designed on paper. And if you have a computer, what will you design with it? Uh, I hope a robot arm. A robot arm? Yes. I have just the person you want to talk to. Uh, Mr. Robot and forward, please! Oh, he's absolutely magnificent. How did he get his name, Peter? Well, it's Robot and the Great, actually. It couldn't be Robot and the Greatest, that's big-headed. It yeah. couldn't be Robot and Greater, because that's what people pulverise cheese on. <laughs> He's the tallest I've made so far. How tall is he? 
six foot three when he stood up to his full height. Six foot three. And what on earth is he made of? Ceiling tiles, expanded polystyrene. Ceiling tiles? Yes, ordinary expanded polystyrene, ceiling tiles, gold paper, balsa wood, bit of spruce. Incredible. About nine electric motors, radio control. Incredible. And does he talk? Well, why don't you ask him? Do you talk, robot? Affirmative. Are there any Mrs. Robottoms or Mrs. Robottom bottlings? Negative. <laughs> and are you friendly? Negative. Oh dear, I'm sorry about that. Now, uh, how long have you been inventing things like Mr. Robottom? Since I was about eight. I uh, started with pram wheels and Meccano on long nets of wire. Yes, I've noticed you've got all sorts of other things here. I'm absolutely fascinated by this. What on earth is that? That's a crater scraper. A what? A crater scraper for use on other planets. But leveling, course, leveling the planets. Yeah. I see. Carries its own monorail track with it. Isn't that clever? And of course it steers. Yes. And it, it can literally pick up rubbish or anything like that. Yes, it? it moves about by walking on a foot at the back. Very clever indeed. Love that. Well, what about these? This seems part of the alternative technology. That's something quite fascinating. Well, we've tried solar power here. Yeah. Those two. Convection and curled film. Uh-huh. Bubbles produced by balloons can be quite powerful. That's a oh, bubble yes. engine. Yes. Now... And this is your assistant? This is my assistant, How Samantha, do you do? my daughter. Oh, you're Samantha? Yes. We've yes. heard about you. You're apparently a tester of these things, yes. aren't you? You actually do test them? Yes. Yeah. That's right, she's going to test this one now. Uh, what is that exactly? That's a Babylonian catamaran. A, a what? A Babylonian catamaran. catamaran. Bubbles go down the keel and oh, push it along by wedging up the back of the keel. Oh, that, she goes. That She'll do seven hours at tick over. That's absolutely One balloon full. And this is what? It's just a, a simple... Uh, same principle, but... Oh, I see the bubbles underneath. Yeah. And this one is, is also... This, is, this demonstrates yeah. a different sort of balloon engine. Yeah. We've got two little plastic bags which inflate alternately. And that goes on the, on the floor? Yeah, that's the vehicle. Could you demonstrate that, yeah. Sam? Yes. It's great fun having a father for... An inventor? I'll bet it is. I had one. Because Very being an so. inventor, you don't know what he's going to do next. I can imagine. Well, there's another one who's an inventor as well, and that's Sterling Moss, who is fascinated by all this sort of whiz kid technology. And when I heard his house was a wonderland of electronic bleeps and buzzes, I took up his computer-printed invitation, which is here, to join him for a very unusual breakfast. Yes, please. Yes, please. Oh, oh, black or white? Oh, black, please. 
The thing that impresses me is that it's a totally magical house. Everything seems to have a sense of magic in it. Well, I guess it's magic if you don't understand it. Yes, yes. It, <laughs> it, it, there are a lot of novel things. I mean, when, when I arrive, I push a button on my motorbike or in the car and the garage door opens yeah and then i can walk in i can push a button and, and the bath can run and, yeah uh, and then you've got uh, tv and you've got vtr yes. and uh, you've got uh, hi-fi the, yeah, the whole thing which i can control of course from here yeah and you just um, press the buttons and that thing goes. yeah i push this one here for instance yeah. and one of the things will go up yeah. and i push this one here and another one goes up and then this one goes up here and then and i fold the apps down if i want the vhs or if i want the, the turntable and, uh, and I can also switch the hi-fi on from there, and I can switch the television on from here. <laughs> and if I, if I don't like the, so this is quite yes. useful, if I don't like the station on hi-fi, then yes. I just push that button in and it automatically changes. <laughs> You know, which is very common. Uh, there are a few other things which are, which are rather magical, I think, or I always think are, that um, if I happen to go out to the country, I can take a little gadget I've got here. Yeah. Now, this, as you can see, you switch on, there's a telephone. Yeah. Uh, I switch it on, and then I dial this number. Yes. in London and I'm in the country so I dial it out and then I have an answering machine here I then take another little gadget put it in front of this it makes a noise this thing speaks to my gadget here the gadget here so says just a minute it winds everything back and speaks through this to me in the field up at the tring and tells me what, what people have been saying to me here which I think is rather magical well there are a lot of incredibly bright youngsters about mm. who really do know electronics huh? would you recommend that they tried it in their mum's home or their dad's home I would if, if they're into this scene, you know, yeah. I mean, people say, well, why do you do it? People say, are you that lazy? It isn't, I'm not... No, it's got nothing to do with it. Nothing to do with it at all. It's just yeah. that I happen to like to feel that if I'm here, I can do things without having to take the table up and rush yeah. around the house. I can do things. If I want to speak to somebody, I push the button. Yeah. If the front door, I push the button and say, who's there? I remember talking to a secretary of yours years ago who said that she got jammed at a garage door once. Was that... <laughs> I wish there was, she may have done, I haven't, but uh, that I suppose could happen. I mean, if there was a cut in the electricity, that could be a bit embarrassing. Yes. But if there is a cut in the electricity, well then of course I've got a generator that automatically starts as soon as it stops. You've actually got a generator yes. that you can... Yes, that uh, when the can. current goes out, the generator automatically starts and keeps things like the deep freeze and so on working, yes. Uh, Do you want to see it? Yeah, we'd love to see that. Okay. Okay. Great, yeah. All right, let's get out of here. Oh, that's Here we are. <laughs> are you the generator? Hello? Hello? Are you then? Join, join it. That's the best generator in the world. You can get started up in the world. That's right. That is a wonderful collection. Uh, absolutely amazing, really. How many light bulbs have you got? Uh, over a thousand in all. And this is just a small part of the collection. I'll bet it is. Which is your favourite? Uh, this one. It's a 1898 carbon filament lamp. 1890, it's nearly 100 years old. Yes. It's still burning. Yes. Prince a friend of my burnt. dad's found it in an old house. Oh, yes. And then gave it on to you. I yes. suppose that's how you get many. You can't go buy these. <laughs> no, no. What about this one? That's a beehive lamp. It's just a neon discharge lamp. It's about 20 years old. 20 years. And this one that's flickering? That's a quite... It's a modern one, and it's meant to flicker like that. Oh, I see. Simulate a candle. Yeah. Oh, I see. Kind of like a candle flame. And this one with a cross in it, very reassuring in the dark for a small child. And what about the ER there, uh, Elizabeth Regina? Yes, I was made for the coronation. Beautiful. So it's still burning after all, in yes. 1952. And these, of course, are uh, what? They're quite old ones. That's called a squirrel cage lamp <laughs> because of the effect of the filament. That's about oh. 30 years old. And this, of course, you invented yourself, didn't you? Uh, yes. Uh, how does that work? Well, the, that's a conventional car ignition coil. The Tesla coil? Yes. yes. And that produces a high voltage. Uh huh. And that produce a high voltage field around this piece of foil. Well, of course, we wouldn't be able to see that without taking all the lights oh, no. down in the studio, would we? That would, what, glow blue? Or it's a green. It just lies on that, yes. uh, on that piece of foil and the induction virtually yeah. lights it. I think that's absolutely amazing. That would be a Tesla coil, wouldn't it? Yeah, yes. it is. Really. Interesting the way that that works. Quite fascinating. Really amazing to see all these things together. Interesting. <laughs> yes, it is, isn't it? Absolutely fantastic. It's all for today. No, it's not all for today. Reset your program transceivers for the same time next week. One, six, eight hours. One, zero, zero, eight, zero minutes. Six, zero, four, 
eight zero zero seconds from now. I love to listen to him, but hang on a minute, you jumped up pocket calculator. We haven't finished yet. We couldn't do a program on technology without taking a look at one of the great technological advances of the 20th century, laser light. I went down to Shepperton Studios to meet two very familiar robots, probably relations far better behaved than this one, but they weren't quite what they appeared to be. As you can see, or rather, as you can't see, I am invisible at the moment. The reason is, of course, I'm in a very magical place where magicians play with light, like this, and suddenly you can see me. Well, this is the magic of lasers, one of the most exciting forms of magic that has ever been developed. Now, as you can also see, I have two very famous friends with me, R2-D2 and C-3PO. Can you see 3PO? I mean, can you see C-3PO? The point is, can you really see them, or do you just think that you're seeing them? Well, now, there's a point, isn't it? I'm visible to you, but R2-D2's gone, and C-3PO's vanished. Or can you see them again? And can I touch my friend there again? And the answer is, yes, I can. Why? All through the magic of the laser. And with just that, I'm invisible. But my friends, you can see them quite clearly. Now, John, you are the wizard of light. So the they du- say. Oh, uh, well, you are. Yes. <laughs> you are. John, what exactly is a laser? Well, a laser is uh, a light that was invented in about 1960, which is uh, a coherent source of um, pure light and it's that light indeed that uh, enables us to make these three-dimensional photographs if you like i simply call them uh, photographs that you've just been playing around there with r2d2 into a telephone box which was only three foot deep yes and it would be 150 feet deep there's doctor who well doctor who's i uh, met him the other day we were were talking about this he said could you get this box out i said get it out of my way (laughs) and here we have a tap which i think unbelievable believe you can turn on (laughs) actually poking forward (laughs) expect the the water to run out (laughs) just wash your hands but that's what it was designed for so to remind you i have it outside my toilet But John, how did you start? Are you in, are, are you in fact a scientist? No, my, my, my background uh, with holography and lasers is, is purely self-taught, out of interest. I started off lighting uh, bands, including the Who, as you mentioned uh, yeah. before, with conventional Brilliant. lights, and uh, I found the laser to be an extension of lighting. It gave me uh, opportunities to do effects that uh, erstwhile tungsten uh, lamps, etc., wouldn't permit to be done. Yeah. And, um, and that's how I've managed to get this uh, terrible reputation of, of going around trying to kill everybody with them. 